Hello and welcome to part 4 and the final instalment of the AS History Topic Guide for Tsarist Russia which is only going to be on the, the year of 1917 due to the fact that this is the last major bit of the course with the Bolshevik takeover and the short reign of the provisional government. The events of uh, January to March need to be covered due to the fact that this is the 1917 revolution which was very very impactful on Russia. Uh, it all started off with because of in Petrograd in the winter of 1917, starvation and desperation produced a workers' uh, revolution. Uh, this was fueled by the many events that we covered in the last podcast with, with the Russo-Japanese War, World War One, uh, famine, uh, Bloody Sunday, and all these kind of things fueled together. Uh, it can be seen because on the 9th of January, yeah, it all started off with uh, 100. 50,000 workers demonstrating in Petrograd on the anniversary of the events of Bloody Sunday where 2,000 people were peacefully protesting and a hundred of them well hundreds of them were shot down um, by the Tsar's guards but not on the order of the Tsar but because they panicked but it was taken to be the Tsar. A month later on the 14th of January uh, 100,000 workers from 58 factories were on strike uh, the Duma finally demanded the abdication of the Tsar and on the 19th of February news that bread would be rationed uh, from the 1st of March brought panic buying and some violence in baker's queues. Um, on the 22nd of February 20,000 workers went from the Pulitov works went on strike and this isn't the first time that they went on strike but this is one of the biggest times that these, these workers went on strike and one of the most influential. A day later, on the 23rd of February, a march of women on an International Women's Day was swelled by striking workers and militant students, amounting to over 200,000 demonstrators calling for bread and reforms. On the 24th to the 25th of February, a day later, demonstrations grew more menacing amid increasing calls for the overthrow of the Tsar. On the 26th, Nicholas authorised the use of troops and endorsed the closure of the Duma. Um, this was one of the probably his final steps due to the fact that he wanted to use troops against his own people, never mind in the war. They were already losing in the war and already basically lost in the war and he was now using troops against his own people. On the 27th of February, the Petrograd garrison uh, mutinied as they didn't want to go against their own people and they joined and even armed the protesters. The Duma forced a provisional committee to take control. Uh, and the Petrograd Soviet was now created. On the 28th of February, a day later, Nicholas II left his military headquarters to return to Petrograd, but his train was diverted. His ministers were arrested uh, on the authority of the Provisional Committee. The, the, uh, this Provisional Committee um, was the Petrograd Soviet, and they issued Order Number 1. This proclaimed Soviet authority over the army and encouraged the formation of soldier Soviets. Uh, sailors mutinied in Kronstadt in regards to this. On the 1st of March, the Duma and Soviet agreed to support the creation of the provisional government. Um, this, this was encouraged by his ministers and generals. And um, this also led to a day later the Tsar abdicating and um, he abdicated in the belief that um, his brother Grand Duke Mikhail would uh, take the throne. Um, however, a day later Mikhail refused the throne, leaving the provisional government and the Petrograd Soviet in charge. The Tsar, his family and most of his ministers were placed under house arrest um, and the Tsar and his family were murdered a year later by the Bolsheviks in July in 1918 due to the fact that he could still be a, a symbol of uprising against the Bolsheviks. After the Tsar's abdication Russia was left with two ruling authorities the Provisional Government and the Petrograd Soviet. Um, the Soviet agreed to accept the Provisional Government's authority until a constituent assembly could be elected to draw up a new constitution. Uh, this arrangement between them was known as the dual authority uh, or dual power of Russia. 
Uh, dual power was the, that the Prince Lvov became Prime Minister with the government, uh, compromising mainly Liberal Octoberists and cadets. Kerensky, who sat on the Executive Committee of the Petrograd Soviet, was the only socialist in the new government. And the Petrograd Soviet mainly comprised of radicals, especially the SRs and the Mensheviks, uh, acted as the guardian of the right of the workers and soldiers. The provisional government managed to pass a, a few reforms before uh, they were taken over. Uh, these were that the provisional government promised uh, and the Soviet accepted uh, that the people had civil liberties, um, that there was an amnesty for political prisoners, uh, so that they'd be kind of released and all these people that uh, kind of fought against the Tsar would now be let back in. Um, there was also an abolition of capital punishment and also exile. And there was now the appointment of independent judges due to the fact that these judges were now uh, independent from the state and uh, were more likely to be unbiased. However, there was a declining support for the provisional government due to the fact that the Soviet and the provisional government disagreed on many issues. Um, for example, the conduct of war and the peasants' rights uh, to take land. Um, the provisional government continued to fight the war, uh, which led to mass public demonstrations uh, and resignations of government ministers and their replacement by five socialists in May. Meanwhile, the countryside peasants took the law into their own hands and seized land. In cities, food supplies were chaotic, uh, real wages fell and prices rose. By the summer of 1917, there was little support left for the provisional government in the end. Uh, Lenin, uh, returned, who was the leader of the Bolsheviks, um, returned from exile in Switzerland in April 1917 and he gave a, a rousing speech as soon as he arrived, uh, later published as the April Theses. He demanded all power be given to the Soviets uh, and he promised an end to the war and land for, pe uh, land for the peasants. And he na later named this uh, Bread, Land and peace and this was kind of the thing that in effect uh, he wanted he was accepting the peasant takeover and he wanted to tell the, the Russians what they wanted to hear. This helped unite Bolsheviks under his leadership uh, over the next few weeks as he managed to win over most of the central committee of the Bolshevik party to his belief uh, and uh, to his belief in non-cooperation with the provisional government and wanted to go it alone with the Bolsheviks. Uh, the July days, as they're known, as in July, Lenin was joined by Trotsky, who had returned from exile in May. However, um, an armed uh, protest attracted by uh, uprising soldiers and sail uh, sailors um, and factory workers in Petrograd on the 3rd to the 4th of July. Um, although it attracted some Bolshevik followers, it threatened to undermine Lenin's efforts due to the fact that the provisional government used troops to break up the protest. Several predominant Bolsheviks were arrested, uh, Trotsky being one of them, um, but Lenin managed to escape to Finland just before he was captured. The Kornlov affair was a massive thing for the, the provisional government due to the fact that in July Kerensky became Prime Minister and General Kornlov became Commander-in-Chief uh, during wartime. Kornlov believed he could restore strong government and he prepared to bring some loyal troops to Petrograd. Um, Kerensky, however, saw this as a threat as he opposed Kornlov's coup uh, of the 25th to the 30th of August and asked the Petrograd Soviet to help defend the city. However, this was a massive, massive error for the provisional government due to the fact that he uh, they gave the, the Bolsheviks weapons and allowed them to challenge the approaching army. Railway workers halted trains carrying the troops to the capital and persuaded for them to desert while Kerensky had Kornlov uh, arrested. The Kornlov affair increased support um, for the Bolsheviks and weakened Kerensky's position as Kerensky basically ordered uh, the Bolsheviks to kill their own men and uh, the army members um, for their own sake. The Bolsheviks, who had uh, refused any compromise with the increasingly unpopular provisional government, managed to grow at the expense of the Mensheviks and the SRs who urged national unity 
and the Bolsheviks therefore continued to work with the provisional government as they were gaining majorities. In September, the Bolsheviks gained a majority on both the Moscow and Petrograd Soviets, with Trotsky becoming chairman of the Petrograd Soviet. By October, the Bolshevik party had a membership of 200,000 and a force of 10,000 Red Guards. The revolution finally came in the October of 1917, um, as from Finland, Lenin urged the seizure of power. Um, however, the Bolshevik Central Committee was reluctant to lead an uprising against the provisional government without a mandate from an elected constitutional assembly. Um, therefore, uh, on the 7th of October, Lenin returned secretly to Petrograd. Um, Kerensky, fearing uprisings, ordered the more radical army units to leave Petrograd. Um, on the 9th of October, the Petrograd Soviet set up a military revolutionary committee under Trotsky. It claimed the responsibility for the defence of Petrograd, so it wasn't seen as a as an uprising against Kerensky, or even though it was. A day later, on the 10th of October, Lenin won a central committee vote for an armed rising to replace the provisional government with a Petrograd Soviet. Um, 14 days later, on the 24th of October, around 8,000 Bolshevik Red Guards and Kronstadt sailors seized key positions in in Petrograd, uh, such as telephone exchanges, post offices, uh, railway stations, uh, even the state bank, um, bridges and also power stations, and it ended up with Kerensky fleeing the country. Uh, a day later, the Red Guards and civilian uh, civilians broke into the Winter Palace and arrested the remaining members of the provisional government. Uh, in order to keep power, um, Lenin needed to uh, consolidate their revolution. On the 25th of October, Lenin had announced the seizure of power in the name of all Russian Congress of Soviets in the Petrograd Soviet. The next day, the Congress of Soviets met and socialists from other parties denounced the Bolshevik coup. Uh, this meant the, ben the Mensheviks and most of the SRs walked out. Um, just leaving the Bolsheviks and the, mo the more extreme left wing SRs in control. Lenin established a government of political commissioners and he called it the Subnarkum. Uh, he was its chairman and Trotsky was the commissioner for foreign affairs. Uh, the Subnarkum had the power to rule by decree without any reference to the Soviet and it was made up of exclusively Bolsheviks. Uh, the decrees that he put through um, were that the decree on peace called for an immediate end to the war as he'd promised. The decree on land declared all land be the property of the people, as he also promised. The decree on workers' control gave the work, workers control of the factories. Ranks and titles were also abolished. The banks were nationalised so the Bolsheviks could have complete control because the bank would have control over, the, over what was happening and they need control over the bank. And church lands were also nationalised. In order to gain power, they needed to suppress the opposition. Um, and the early Bolshevik decrees were hugely popular, especially the decree on land, which helped win over peasant support for the SRs. However, much of Russia remained outside Bolshevik control, and many petitions from factory committees and army units called on the Bolsheviks to form a new government representing all of the socialist parties. Um, Lenin, however, was set on a one-party rule, um, as class warfare was encouraged with a campaign against the bourgeoisie. All anti-Bolshevik newspapers were closed down. Many civil servants were dismissed and replaced with Bolsheviks. The Cheka, the Bolshevik secret police, was established in December, and hundreds of cadets, Mensheviks and right-wing SRs were arrested. Uh, the main hope of the Bolsheviks' opponents centred on the elections to the Constitute uh, Assembly. Um, Lenin had to allow these elections to go ahead because uh, if he didn't, he knew there'd be huge opposition if he didn't. However, in the election, the SRs won most of the seats. Lenin was appalled by this and announced that an assembly was made up of different political parties, um, would be a bourgeoisie parliamentary democracy which isn't what was needed for Russia at the time. Therefore, 
The assembly met for one day on the 5th of January and then was closed down. Lenin decided that the Bolsheviks would rule on behalf of the proletariat and, these, and those demonstrating in favour of the assembly were dispersed by gunfire from the Red Guards. Um, after this, there would be, not be another de democratically elected body in Russia until after the collapse of the Soviet communism uh, 70 years later. This sums up the whole of AS Russia um, from the start of Alexander II to the Bolshevik takeover of 1917. Um, and we will continue next time with Lenin's actual plans with a new topic of the A2 course. Um, thank you all for listening and um, catch you with A2.